Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today we're going to cover metal forming uh, topic uh, as our first lecture. In this part, uh, we're going to look into uh, a little bit on the overview of metal forming, some material behavior in metal forming, and also temperature in metal forming. Metal forming uh, consists of the large group of manufacturing process. But the process involves the plastic deformation um, to change the shape of the metal workpiece. So usually dye is used as the tool to, uh, to apply stress uh, to, to change the shape of the work material. So this uh, stress must exceed the yield strength of the metal in order to change its shape. And the metal will take shape of the uh, geometry of the die that um, that have been designed. So for basic uh, type um, of metal for forming processes, it is classified into two big um, category. There are bulk deformation process and sheet metal working. So under bulk deformation uh, process, we have uh, several processes like rolling process, forging process, extrusion process wire and wire and bar drawing so under the sheet metal working there are bending operation deep or cut drawing and also shearing processes okay so in our class we will be focusing more on the bulk deformation process uh, rather than the sheet metal working so there will be only um, introduction on the sheet metal working process in metal uh, forming process um, we will need stress okay so in order for us to change the shape of the metal so stress to plastically deform the metal usually is compressive for example in rolling forging and extrusion processes however uh, in some uh, forming process uh, they are also tensile and sometimes combination of tensile and com com and compressive for example uh, in the wire and bar drawing, it is more on tensile stress um, process. Okay, still other uh, others also will apply shear stresses. So let us look into the processes. Okay, so if you can see in the first picture, uh, this is a rolling process. So this one is uh, the the um, roller. Okay, so and this is the work material. So in order uh, to roll the process, there will be a compressive uh, of force uh, coming from the uh, upper side of the and lower side of the roller. Okay, so that the thickness of the work material can be reduced. The second one is the forging process. So if you can see here, this is um, the work material and these are the die. So there will be force coming from uh, up here okay so up uh, and then it will uh, change the shape of the work material so here again it is a compression so the next one is extrusion so this is the work material uh, and then it will be pushed by the ram inside here before coming out and uh, create the new shape of the material okay so again this in this process compression is involved and as for the last one this is wire and bar drawing so instead of pushing so in the, in here the work material um, will be pulled okay coming out from the die opening and then uh, the stress here will be tensile stress so in terms of the material properties in the metal forming um the most desirable material properties that we uh, we need to change uh, must be um, low in uh, yield strength and also high ductility. Why we need uh, low yield strength? So that uh, we will be able to change the shape. If the, uh, the yield strength is high, so uh, it will be very difficult for us to change the shape of the material. And high ductility meaning that we might uh, we uh, it is easy for us to deform it and change the shape okay so this process usually affected by the temperature 
Okay, these properties we can change uh, using the temperature where the ductility will increase and yield strength will decrease when the temperature is raised. Okay, so other factor will be strain rate and also friction. So bulk deformation process is characterized by the significant deformation uh, and massive shape uh, changes, meaning that in the end, this work material will be changed dramatically into something else uh, with this uh, with a certain shape. Okay, so uh, bulk in this bulk deformation process is referring to the work part with the relatively low surface area to volume ratio. So what does it mean uh, here? So if you can see here, uh, for example, this is the bulk um, work material and this is the sheet metal. So in here, if we put uh, A over V, meaning the area over the volume, we assume like, for example, this one is 1 meter cube and this one also 1 meter cube. So compared to uh, this sheet metal, the surface area for this product is low compared to this one okay so meaning that the area over the volume although the volume is the same right this one is one meter this uh, this one is one meter cube this is one meter cube but the area here is smaller so for example here if we put uh, the area here compared to this one this sheet metal might be double in um, the surface area compared to this one okay although they have the same volume and for starting work shape uh, this is usually simple geometries for example this one is the cylindrical billet and this is the um, square or rectangular bar now let us look into the operation of the bulk deformation okay so the first one a is rolling process Okay, so if you can see here, there are two roller in this um, uh, part. Okay, so this is what we call as roller. And then this is work material. And the work material will come inside here and the thickness of the work material will be reduced. The second one is forging. So as a forging, there will be a design of a die um, uh, with certain shape that you want to produce. And then when the material is uh, placed inside the die, there will be compression and then the die uh, will shape the work material into shape that we want. Now the next shape that we were, we're looking into is extrusion. So extrusion is where the work material is placed inside a die and there will be a ram that will ram the work material and the material will come out from the die opening okay so this one um, the work material will come out with the shape of the die opening and the, uh, this one is wire and bar drawing so wire and bar drawing is usually uh, the end uh, shape is the same okay so usually it is just a round shape where we want to shape from a very big uh, diameter to smaller diameter okay so now let us look into the animation of the rolling process so this is normally what will happen in the rolling process however it is not in done in one um, cycle like like the one that we see inside here this one is just showing you the example um, usually rolling is done in several step uh, to reduce the thickness or to shape it into certain uh, shape that we want the next process is forging so in here the work material will be placed into the die and then it will be compressed like the the one that we see inside the animation here so the final product will follow the shape of the die so here is the uh, the example of how the uh, forging product will look like so this one is the uh, billet, right? uh, the cylindrical billet that has been heated and then uh, placed inside the, um, the die here. So after the uh, compression, you will see that this is the product and these are the flesh. Okay? 
So I'm going to explain later what is flash. So the next process is extrusion. So in extrusion, if you can see here, uh, there will be material will be placed inside here and the material will come out from the die opening. If you can see in the end here, so this part, um, the part that is not uh, going through the um, the the die opening here is called butt b u t t yes but okay so this part will be uh, removed uh, from the process after uh, the the uh, meaning the extrusion has already finished okay and the last uh, process that we are going to look into is wire and bar drawing so in wire bar drawing uh, the work material will be uh, uh, will be pulled okay to come out from the die opening so usually it is done uh, to reduce the diameter of the uh, work material so and this process also is not done in one um, one go okay so it it has to be repeated to into several die uh, in order to get the final product the sheet metal working in the other hand is a forming um, and related uh, and uh, the, the operation is uh, related to the um, forming of the sheet strip and coil okay so um, compared to the bulk deformation it has high surface area to volume ratio of starting material um, this one will be distinguished from the bulk deformation so in this operation it is usually called press working uh, because this operation are uh, usually uh, performed in a uh, press okay so the part will cause stamping and then the tool will be punch and die so here are some example of the operation under the sheet metal working so a is bending so if you can see here this is the sheet metal that being a uh, punch okay using uh, uh, this uh, punch and then uh, it will follow the shape of the uh, die here so then the work material is bent into this shape okay the next one is uh, deep drawing so the sheet metal will uh, be uh, uh, punched inside the um, the mold here the die and here so then and when it come out uh, it will become uh, a shape of the um the mole uh, the die here okay the last one is shearing so shearing is uh, basically is um process of cutting off the uh, sheet metal okay so when we punch uh, the contact sheet uh, the 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 sheet will be uh, separated like this one this uh, topic that we're going to discuss is the material behavior in metaforming. So uh, since the material will go through the plastic uh, deformation, stress strain curve will be the primary interest in this uh, subject. Okay. So in plastic region, metal behavior is expressed through flow curve, which is given uh, uh, through this equation, where sigma equal to k epsilon n. So K is the strength coefficient and N it will be the strain hardening exponent. So the flow curve uh, will be based on the true stress and true strain. Now let's see the stress strain relationship through this graph. Okay. So uh, if you can remember, this graph is actually um, if you are if you are done with the tensile test previously. Uh, so this is the most common. Um, stress strain um, uh, graph okay so in here when the uh, stress is applied on the uh, certain material okay it will start to uh, shift the yield strength y here and then uh, it will come to the maximum uh, at it here which is the yf okay so in the middle here so we can classify it as the average flow stress of the process okay now let us look into the flow stress so for most metal at room temperature strength will increase when we uh, deform it uh, due to the strain hardening 
So flow stress is this instantaneous value of the stress that required to continue deforming the material. So in this case, the flow stress uh, will uh, we can assume it straight same as the stress flow where uh, equation which is uh, k epsilon n. Okay, so uh, where yf is the flow stress, k is the strength coefficient, and strain hardening exponent and also epsilon will be the maximum strain during the formation process. On the other hand, average flow stress uh, is determined by the integrating the flow curve equation between zero to the final strain. Okay, so uh, we have to differentiate between the average flow stress and the flow stress. Pro flow stress is on certain point and uh, for the average flow stress, it will be from uh, the process from the start till the end. Okay, so this one uh, is calculated by using uh, yf equal to k epsilon n over 1 plus n. Okay, so the difference will be 1 plus n. Okay, from the flow stress equation. So the the value inside here is uh, the the uh, component is the same like the one in the uh, flow stress okay now uh, in order for you to understand more on the uh, exp, uh, flow stress and average flow stress let, let us look into the problem and the solution so in here uh, uh, the flow curve of for pure aluminium uh, the strength coefficient will be k equal to 175 mpa strain hardening exponent n 0.2 in a forming operation, the final true strain will be 0 0.75. So we have to determine the flow stress and average average flow stress. So uh, first, you take the equation for the flow stress, and then you will see K is the 175 MPa uh, times with 0 0.75 and uh, with the power of 0 0.2. So you are going to have 165 MPa. Okay. So for average flow stress you have to divide by 1 plus n. So as you already get the value here, 165 MPa, you just divide by 1 plus n. So 1.2, so you will get 138 MPa. Now let us look into the second problem. So authentic Tesla steel has a flow curve with strength coefficient k equal to 1200 MPa. Strength hardening exponent n equal to 0 0.4. Tensile test specimen with gauge length 100 mm. Then it is stretched to a length of 145 mm. Determine the flow stress and average flow stress that the metal experience at this trade. Okay. So in this here, if you can see, the epsilon is not given. right? So in here, you will have to calculate the epsilon. So for the epsilon, it is calculated by using loan the uh, final um, length over the initial length okay so if you can see here is it is stretched to 145 mm over the 100 so meaning this is the uh, changes uh, of the uh, the stretch uh, product okay so the ratio so you will get loan equal uh, 1.45 you'll get 0 0.372 so then you will be able to calculate the value for the flow stress then you will get the 808 MPa and average flow stress equal to 577 MPa. So for any metal, uh, the K and N value uh, in the flow curve is dependent to the temperature. Okay, So it's very temp uh, sensitive to the temperature. So both strength K and also strain hardening will be reduced when the temperature is high. Okay, So in addition, the ductility also will increase when the temperature is increased. Due to that, the temperature in metal forming is classified into three uh, levels. One is cold working, second is warm working, and third one is hot working. Okay. Now let us look into the, um, the type of the temperature uh, one by one. The first one will be cold working. So as the name it is as cold, so it is performed at room temperature or slightly above. Okay, so slightly above is not due to the temperature that rise through heating, but it is more on because of the friction and also from the force that 
uh, uh, kinetic force uh, that we give into the uh, workpiece. Okay, so many coal forming uh, process is very important for mass production operation because um, they can produce a, a part with minimum or no machining uh, so that uh, it uh, can go into near net shape or net shape process okay so meaning that there will be no additional machining required uh, for the process the advantages if we um, perform the forming process uh, when uh, at home temperature will be it can uh, give better accuracy and close closer tolerance because there will be no shrinkage of the metal because there is no changes of the temperature right and then it can also produce better surface finish and strain hardening uh, will increase the strength and hardness of the work material and uh, grain flow during the, uh, the deformation will cause desirable directional properties in the product uh, because um, the grain inside there will be uh, quite uh, is good and then there will be no heating of the work required, so less cost on heating uh, the, the work material. So, um, despite the advantages, they also have um, uh, disadvantages. For example, you will need uh, higher forces and power for the deformation. And then, uh, of course, lah, if you uh, push the, the work material that is soft due to the heating and the one without heating, of course, the one that had been heated will flow uh, much better compared to the one uh, with, without heating, right? Okay, so starting work surface must be free of scale and dirt. So the starting material cannot uh, have any scale, any oxide layer on it, okay? It has to be um, very, uh, very clean, okay? So ductility and strain hardening limit the amount of the forming that can be done. So because of the... Uh, because it is not heated, so uh, the ductility will not be increased, right? And then uh, due to that, uh, we cannot produce a very complicated part or you cannot produce a part uh, using uh, the material that is low in ductility, okay? So in some cases, metal need to be annealed before further deformation can be accomplished. Uh, and some other cases, metal is simply not ducted enough to be cold work, okay? So if we it is not ductile enough and we try to push into it, it will start to break instead of producing the uh, good product. For the warm working, it is performed at temperature above room temperature, but it is below recrystallization temperature of the work material. So dividing line between cold and uh, warm working, it is expressed in terms of um, melting point, which is 0 0.3 times the Tm. Okay, so uh, when uh, the temperature is uh, up than 0 0.3 uh, melting temperature of the work material, then it is considered as the warm working. So now let us look into the advantages and disadvantages of warm working. So the advantages will be, uh, of course, once you heat the work material, it will be lower forces and power in uh, compared to the cold working. Um, so you can produce more intricate work geometries and you uh, the need of the annealing may be, uh, can be reduced or you can you don't have to do any annealing anymore okay so but the disadvantages of course you will need um, uh, the workpiece to be heated so uh, there will be cost on the um, heating part so for hard working, the deformation of the temperature will be above the recrystallization temperature of the work material. So uh, this one is about half of the melting temperature. So in this uh, part, we can calculate it using the equation 0 0.5 times the uh, melting temperature of the work material. And then uh, the metal will continue to soften as the temperature increase above the 0 0.5 Tm. And then it will enhance the advantage of, the hot, of hot working above this level. So, uh, why manufacturer go for the hot working? Okay, why hot working is uh, selected uh, by most of the uh, manufacturer because of the capability for the substantial plastic deformation. So, you can create a lot of uh, intricate uh, geometries. You can create a lot of um, uh, product, and you can also use 
uh, many types of material. Okay, so uh, when the strength coefficient k is substantially less than room temperature, the strain hardening exponent uh, will we theoretically we can say as uh, it will become zero. So the ductility will significantly increase, and therefore you can do the metal forming to the material uh, smooth smoothly. So now let us look some advantages about working. So uh, as uh, compared to the previous um, uh, process, work shape can be significantly altered. Okay, so you can uh, shape into many of sh uh, intricate shape. Uh, you can have low a uh, lower forces and power. Okay. And then metal that usually fracture in cold working, you can do it through the hot form. Okay. And then strength properties of the product will be generally isotropic and no strengthening of part occur from work hardening. Okay, so um, it will be advantageous in case when the part is to be subsequently processed by the coil forming. As for the disadvantages, um, in this one, it will lower the dimensional accuracy. Why? Because um, as a metal um, heated, you do the um, process of um, a metal forming uh, in the end when it cool down it will start to shrink okay so higher total energy were required meaning that uh, you will need uh, a lot of energy thermal energy to heat the workpiece and then you will uh, need um, energy uh, added if you add with the energy to deform the metal then it will be higher okay so uh, for the work surface oxidation, it will happen when uh, it starts to cool down. Um, there is a possibility for the oxidation to happen. Uh, therefore, it will give a poor surface finish. And the last one will be shorter to life. So, when the work material is being heated, of course, it will affect the dye, uh, the roller or any kind of uh, tools that we use to to perform the process of the metal forming okay so therefore there will be uh, more costs on the tie um, and maintenance so uh, for the strain rate sensitivity theoric theoretically a metal uh, when it is hot working it will behave perfectly plastic okay so uh, with the strain hardening exponent equal to zero. So the, the metal should continue to flow at same flow stress once the stress is stretched. However, that one is the uh, ideal condition. Uh, an additional phenomena uh, will occur during the deformation, what we call uh, strain rate sensitivity. This happens usually at elevated temperature. So, strain rate is forming uh, directly related to the speed of deformation B. And the deformation speed uh, B is, um, is the velocity of the ram usually. Okay? So, this one, uh, the strain rate is calculated by using V over H. Where H is the instantaneous high uh, of the workpiece being deformed at certain uh, uh, condition, a certain high uh, is being deformed. Okay, so um, this strain uh, rate is actually the the uh, force that acting on the work material when it is being uh, pushed. Okay, so um, that's why uh, it, it's very much um, related to the velocity and also the height of the work material. Let us look into the effect of flow uh, uh, strain rate on the flow stress. So if we can see flow stress is yf equal to k epsilon n, right? So where k and n is very dependent to temperature, okay? So, at hot working temperature, flow stress also will depend on the strain rate, not only the K and N, because when uh, in temperature is increased, strain rate also will start to increase. So, as strain rate increase, resistance to deform also will start to increase. Okay, so this effect of strain rate on strain properties, we call it as strain rate sensitivity. So, in terms of the strain rate, it is uh, actually in practical, it is a very complicated process. Okay, so because why uh, it, it 
it is very dependent on the work part geometry because we are not uh, creating a, a one shape like a square or a circle uh, shape only. Usually it is involving um, part uh, with very intricate geometry. So uh, it is very complicated for the strain rate to be uh, determined. And variation in strain rate, it will be different in region of the part. So the more um, complicated the part that being created and then uh, the, the determination the evaluation of the strain rate also will be much more complicated okay so strain rate can reach up till uh, 1000 per second okay so which is very big and this one will give a very good resistance for the deformation uh, it can be also uh, it can happen in and uh, many of the metal forming operation so as the strain rate is increased, resistance to deformation also will start to increase. So this uh, usually uh, plotted into the straight line or on the log log graph. So this one will lead into the equation of yf equal to c epsilon uh, dot epsilon n uh, with the power of m, where c is the strain constant and m is the strain rate sensitivity exponent we're going to see how the c and m is uh, get uh, is is uh, obtained in this equation now here is the plot of the flow stress over the strain rate if you can see this is the uh, graph so when we get the c value it will become uh, at 1.0 it will become like this one Okay, so in order to get the M value, it is plot as the log log coordinate. Okay, for the flow stress and also the strain rate, it will become uh, like this. Okay, so you will get the M value based on the slope of the um, uh, of the uh, graph. So um, the constant C is actually indicated by the intersection of each plot with the vertical dashes line at strain rate equal to one. So if we put it here, let's say if you can see the um, the value of the, uh, the the graph inside here when the uh, it is at room temperature, the flow stress at 400 degrees Celsius and 800 degrees Celsius and the 1200 degrees Celsius. If you can see uh, flow stress uh, over the uh, strain rate uh, graph, it will become steeper. Okay, so the the slope will become. Uh, much uh, higher okay so compared to the room temperature which is more to flat one okay so when we put the uh, c the, to, to get the c value it is uh, uh, taken at uh, strain rate 1.0 for all the uh, temperature here so you will see that um, uh, the c value will increase when it is at room temperature and will start to decrease when it goes down to the uh, bottom Okay, to, to the 1200 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, in here also you will see that M, uh, the M, which is the slope of the plot here. Okay, so if it is uh, the, the slope, it will become uh, increased. Okay, so if you can see, it becomes steeper when the temperature is increased. So some observation have been made on the strain rate sensitivity. So it says that increasing temperature will decrease the C value and it will increase the M value. So at room temperature, effect of strain rate is uh, almost negligible. So you don't have to calculate the strain rate okay, when it is the at room temperature, meaning in cold, <clears throat> in cold working, uh, it is almost uh, negligible. So flow curve alone is a good representation of the material behavior. So when the temperature will increase, strain rate will become increasingly important in determining the flow stress. Now let us uh, see the calculation for the strain rate uh, here. So uh, a work part uh, with the starting high is 100 uh, and diameter equal to 55 mm is compressed to final high of 50 mm. During the deformation, the relative speed of the uh, platens compressing the part equal to 200 mm per second. Determine the strain rate at H equal to 100, H equal to 75, and H equal to 51 mm. Okay, so as we know, the strain rate is calculated by V over H, right? So V is given 200, and then the one that we are changing is only H value. 
So the first one is at 100. So you will see that the value is 2.0 per second. And when it is um, increase, uh, decreased to 75 mm, uh, the value become 2.667 per second. And the last one at 51, it will be 3.922 per second. So meaning that once the uh, high of the product is uh, reduced, okay, so it will become harder for the uh, uh, deformation to take place because of the increasing strain rate. Okay, so there will be uh, additional forces acted uh, uh, a more strain uh, rate uh, on the work material because of this um, reduced high. So that's it for today's class. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum.